today on bike paramedic shooting. A .480 ball, a patch. Stick it all the way down. I just dry balled or loaded a Great Plains rifle with a powder patch and ball, but not in that order. I put a ball and patch in there and no powder. Now why on earth would I do that? Well stick around and let's talk about it. get started I want to remind everybody ear and eye protection is strongly recommended one of the ways that I prefer to get a round ball out of here is just shoot them out there's a whole new video on how to do that and I'll leave a link right up here for that one but I mentioned one other time I like to use the co2 bottles so today let's get that out and see how well that works what comes with this is this little canister holder and several little parts that comes with them. I'll put the ball needles aside because I'm going to test them out shortly, see how well they work. But this little piece here comes with a big hole in the top made specifically for percussion guns. And the kit also comes with an extension and a smaller tip that supposedly go over the touch holes of a flintlock rifle. Just put those there together like that. Now I've added a couple of ball needles and the only gripe I have with them is they're too big for the touch holes of most flintlock rifles. So what I've done is I've ground this one down on a bench grinder to have a tip on it and we're going to test this out to see if it actually blow out the uh, round balls from a flintlock rifle. Now, the last time I used this was about four or five weeks ago. I was in Missouri shooting with the Ozark boys. If you want to see that little fun video, right up there's a link to that one. But I dry balled it at the end of the evening and could not shoot it out for whatever reason. So I had this in the vehicle. I remembered having it. And the sad part about these type of devices, at least my luck with, is these little canisters are only good for about two, maybe three shots. That's it. And then the cylinder just kind of evaporates. So we'll get rid of that one. And I'll show you the one we could put in there. Now you have to look at these closely when you buy your kit because this one is threaded at the end, as you can tell. There are some that are smooth on there. So you have to be sure you order the ones that you want to fit your thing from Amazon or other places to be sure you either get the threaded ones or not, depending on what your kit is. Mine is threaded. So simply what you can do is put it in here as such, thread it in there and put the bottom on and you just kind of break the seal on it as such. And I always put it in here to hold it in place. Now the gripe that I have with the plastic ones is this, is when you get it into the cylinder head here, the older models sold were made of metal. If you could find one of those with the metal tip on it, by all means buy it, because these are really not too reliable. And I'll show you one reason why. This is the gripe I have with it, is this piece here won't go on the touch hole, like such. If you had a metal tip, it would work, but these junk plastic ones are no good for getting out the air in flintlock rifles. What you have to do is remove the lock to make it work. So now you have to go through the headache of actually taking your lock out. and not losing all of your parts. So now that the lock is removed, you can see that that tiny little tip does not 
fit too well on the touch hole. See that? This is just not going to work too well. Let's give it a shot and see actually if it works. <laughs> it actually came out. <laughs> <laughs> right on the ground up there. Wow, actually did work. A lot of action on the side. Let's go get that ball and find out how it works. First of all, let's do it this way. Ah, look at that. Right up to the mark, like it's supposed to be. But I heard it hit the target. Aha! <laughs> There we go. Old ball came right out of the gun. So it does work. Now let's try it with the ball needle on it. See if that'll make it work. Ball. Stick it back down again. Notice it's above the mark here. So it has to have a load in it. All right, let's get this lock back on here. Don't lose the screw and the washer mark. Nothing more than just a basketball needle with a ground tip on it. Let's put this in here and see if we can get it to work with the lock on it. Boom! It came out! <laughs> it worked! He saw the patch and the ball. So look at that. Success! That's with a homemade redneck version of a ball needle that I put on a bench grinder to put a little hole in it. So it actually will fit on the end of the touch hole. I know all of you do not have flintlock rifles, so let's try a ball, a percussion gun, and see how that would work. Ah, a little tradition woodsman hawking gun. Love this little rascal that Mrs. Black Petter Maniac Shooter brother gave me back in 2013. Got me started in this very addictive hobby. So I went just basically uh, took it out of the cabinet. I'm going to put a patch on there and a ball. The cool thing about the Delvin rods, you can bend them sideways. Put that all the way down there. Remove my little redneck version needle on here. Put this other tip on it, the big wider tip. This one's got a shorter tip on it. You don't need to go all the way down like the extension on the flintlock rifles does. You need to pull the cock or the hammer all the way back to be able to get right on it. You ready? Ooh! Boy, that percussion one worked great! I've always liked this one for the percussion guns. This thing gets a good solid fit and it shoots that ball at every time. Mr. Bigfoot's tough. Put a flat end on it. <laughs> That's all right, we'll just pour that one again and uh, make that one happen some other day. As you can tell, this device works very well with the little pointed one for percussion guns. Now I'll load that percussion pistol up and try it the same way. Get another 480 ball patch on there. Load it right up. Oh, let's put this thing on here and see how well to get it out with a percussion pistol. <laughs> it came right out. Yeah, I couldn't find that rascal. So I know what kind of tone it makes because I used to find those Civil War mini balls with this thing all the time. Lead, 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 lead. Ah, there we go. And there's the patch just right beside it. Round ball. So the CO2 bottle actually did work. But these things are about 45 bucks a piece. You can get them at uh, Log Cabin Shop, Dixie Gun Works. I found out through doing many draw balls <laughs> that's easier for me just to shoot the balls out, regardless of percussion or flint lock. But I'll tell you one great place that these would be usable. And that is if you happen to find a loaded gun in a pawn shop or one that has been willed to you or gifted to you, you just don't know what kind of powder the previous owner may have put in it. They may even have smokeless powder in there, and you don't want to be shooting that out. So definitely use one of these to get that ball removed. Then you can start out fresh and be on your way. Thanks for watching. And remember, Jesus does love you. 
and we'll catch you next time. You know the cool thing about this, Mrs. Black Paramedic Shooter? What? I don't have to clean guns on this trip. <laughs> Does that mean you're not shooting this afternoon? Now that's that's hard. I, I might have to take one of these out and burn a little powder anyway. And hopefully leave this thing at home. I take it with you, knowing your luck. No! <laughs> we'll catch you next time.